It's like the, the, I just fixed all the pictures too. All right, give me the answers because you know this. No, no, no. What kingdom? <laughs> Protista. And what are their characteristics? Starting with their nuclear condition. Eukaryotes. From now until the end of the year, we're only studying eukaryotes. Cellular condition. Unicellular. Unicellular. They're mostly in what? What are they? Like this is, an, this is a protist, this is a protist, this is a protist. So, yeah, groups. Yeah. They form colonies to help survival or uh, form packs. Some are multicellular, so that's why you see mostly single-celled. What, how do they feed? They feed in a variety of ways because there's a large group in the kingdom of Protista or with variety of feeding methods. And can they move? Yes. yes. So some actually can't, but it's so limited, we're just going to say motile. There are, I'm going to add that, there are some non-motile protists. You need me to go back? Protists exist in three main groups, and they're categorized by how they feed. How do protozoans feed? Heterotrophic. No, they consume food, and what do we call protists? Protozoans, I'm sorry. We familiarize them with what? Animals. Protozoans are animal-like protists that cannot make their own food like every organism in the animal kingdom, so it makes them heterotrophs. Algae are considered what kind of protists? Autotrophs or like what? Uh, photosynthesis. They perform photosynthesis. Yeah, like they are plant-like, correct. Like plants, they make their own food through a process called photosynthesis. And honestly, our kingdom, like when you thought of algae, did you think of them as a protist or a plant? A plant. A plant. So now you know they're protists that are plant-like, yes? And one of our number one producers of the world are protists. Anybody know what they are? Plankton. How did you know that? Good job. So our third group, yeah, I thought I always think of SpongeBob too. Eat. There's heterotrophic plankton. They eat plants. There's actually decomposer like plankton too. Yeah. All right. Slime molds. Fungus like protists. And how do fungi feed? They're good. They're actually decomposers. I need to add that word. Which break down food and they absorb this food through their cell walls. That's something you want to know about slime molds. They are decomposers that break down food. Examples of protists. And obviously, you could tell, well, maybe not obvious, but that these are not single-celled, right? Look at the size of them versus the microscopic version of plankton. When we look under the microscope, we're going to see a lot of these. I want you to underline them because you're going to have to um, identify these organisms. It's part of the lab. And so you're going to see a lot of euglena. You're going to see a lot of paramecium's. You're going to see uh, a lot of other stuff. And I just put, you're going to see uh, some protists that have this shape might not be amoebas, but th the shape of this protist matters. You're going to see these little uh, structures right here. You might even see this sticking out. You know, all these things you're going to have to label. So let's kind of dive into what they are. When you think of protist, like there's a lot of characteristics of protist, and protist is a kingdom. We can learn a lot. We're we're minimizing what we're learning because we have three kingdoms to cover, but their movement and feeding are responsible for, uh, well, their structure are unique for, for taking care of movement and feeding. So that's actually, that, that's like saying our hands help us eat, right? Well, their structure that allows them to move also helps them feed. So one of them is this long tail, which we know what it is. It's called what? Flagella. Anybody know what an organism with a lot of tails is called? Flagellums. Zooflagellates. You know it? 
So flagella is like a whip-like tail. It's, it's, a, it's an extension and allows them for movement and also whips around. And you see these structures inside. You're going to see that, like the color, the actual internal, uh, because a protist is a larger organism. Sometimes you can actually see them without looking under the microscope. So seeing what's in them is easier than what we've looked at before, which is a cell, right? Or uh, a stained bacteria, prepared slide. What's this? Little hair-like projections. Cilia. Cilia, good. And then you've got this, I never get this answer, I don't even know why it's covered, but it's Zootopodia. Zootopodia is actually uh, when an organism warps its cytoplasm, and that's why when I showed you that picture before, you're going to see a lot of that too, and if you're lucky, and if I go back to the video I showed you in the beginning of class, you'll see that movement where the whole, it's like a blob of changing mass because they change their structure by changing their cytoplasm, right? So kingdom fungi, general characteristics, cellular condition, actually nuclear condition. Eukaryotic. eukaryotic. Again, every organism from here on out is eukaryotic. My only prokaryotes are bacteria. That's it. Mostly multicellular good how do they feed good heterotrophic decomposers and they don't move I uncovered that without uncovering it So here's a question for you. How come algae are not plants if they are plant-like and they make their own food? One. No, no, that's true. Because we know plants do not. And what? Unicellular. And unicellular. Start thinking about that because we already covered that twist when we introduced the kingdoms. And those types of questions may appear on your test. 